Hey guys, so today we're going to be enabling two-factor authentication on our TrueNAS installation, the safe way. So what is two-factor authentication and why is there a safe and an unsafe way to implement it in our installation? Well, two-factor authentication, just as the name implies, is a, a method of forcing TrueNAS to ask you for two factors when you're authenticating into the, the system itself. So usually those two factors are a password and a one-time code that's generated on a device that you own. Um, there are other methods that you can do to generate those codes or the second factor, but that's that's the most common, a, a, a temporary code that's generated. Why would you want to do this? Well, it means that your your installation is a lot more secure. If there's an attacker out there who's gotten your password, they, they probably won't won't have your second factor and they won't be able to log in even if they know what your password is. So it prevents attackers from getting into your system and that's especially useful if you can't necessarily knock down your system to a very closed off network or there's uh, some unknown variable in access to your, your system. So how is there a safe way and an unsafe way to do it? Well, unfortunately, the, the drawback of two-factor authentication is if you somehow lose your second authenticating device or it somehow doesn't work, then you're, you are also going to be totally locked out of your system. So what we're gonna do in this uh, video is we're gonna take a look at how to make sure that the two-factor authentication works before enabling it across the entire system. That way, if there's some sort of problem or, or the test fails, we're able to disable it again and you're able to get back into your system. The first step in setting up your two-factor authentication, we're actually gonna look at if SSH is running on the system and we're gonna make sure that it's configured correctly before we go anywhere near the two-factor authentication. You absolutely must do this to enable uh, two-factor factor authentication in a safe way. If you're not going to do this, then you're risking locking yourself out of your system. So absolutely follow this step. The first thing that we're going to do is hit services on the left hand side, and we're going to scroll down to SSH. I can see it's not running on the system. So I'm going to hit the little pencil configure icon. And then I get a couple of options here. So what I want to do is make sure that the option to log in as root with password is enabled. I want to be able to SSH into the system with my root account so that if the two-factor authentication doesn't work the way that I, uh, I expect it to, I'm going to be able to disable it uh, as the root account in uh, via SSH uh, as well. So I'm just going to hit the save icon here. And then the other thing that I want to do is I want to check the option to start automatically so that the system accidentally reboots whilst we're um, you know, working on this or testing it or we're configuring the two-factor authentication that the SSH service will will uh, start back up again without me having to, to log in. The system shouldn't reboot during this process, but who knows, right? It's better to be safe than, than sorry. So then we're just going to hit this little icon here and we're going to get the SSH system to um, start up. So then I'm going to open up my favorite SSH client. So in this case, we're going to take a look at Putty and I'm just going to connect to the instance via um, SSH. So uh, yep, yeah, no problem in uh, storing the uh, SSH key. Uh, I do trust the host, I know that it's mine. So then we're just going to log in here as root and then we're gonna type in the root password for the account. So here we can see that we're logged in via SSH. So that's absolutely a step that we need to take first. It's our backup in case things go wrong. So now that we know that we'll be able to SSH into the system if we have to, uh, we can go ahead and start enabling two-factor authentication. So if I click on the system bot button on the left-hand side, and then I can hit 2FA at the bottom of that list, I'll be brought to a couple of options for two-factor authentication. We will be able to uh, leave a lot of these at the default, but I'm just going to run through them um, very, very quickly to explain what a lot of them mean. So the very first one that we'll see here is the one-time password um, OTP digits. So it's by default six characters, there's a couple of options here for seven or eight characters, depending on the authentication method that you're using. We're going to be using Google's Authenticator, uh, which uses six characters, so there's no issue there. We don't need to uh, to make a change here. And then we've got a, a window option here on the, the right-hand side. So the window option is uh, what will invalidate previous codes. So if I've set this to zero, then only the most current valid code is going to be accepted by the system. However, I could change this to one or maybe two or three, et cetera, et cetera. And that will give me a buffer on either side of my codes. So uh, if I set this value to one, for example, and I generate a code, uh, both the previous code, the current code, and the next code will all be valid at the same time. And that really helps if there's some sort of time sync problem between the codes, if there's a delay, some latency, if you're uh, doing something remotely and you're not 100% certain whether or not you'll be able to get the code in uh, absolutely on time or receive the code on time. Maybe you're receiving the code with a service that sends you a text message. The other option here is the interval for the the uh, code. So it's by default 30 seconds, which means that you uh, your code uh, refreshes every 30 seconds. You can extend this up to, I think, about five minutes. 
Um, and uh, but it, for our use cases, it's it's thirty seconds is perfectly appropriate. We don't need to to do anything um, more with that. And then we've got an option here on the right hand side: enable two factor auth for SSH. So we will be enabling that in the future, but, and this is the most critically important thing, we're not enabling it now. We're going to test the two-factor authentication before we enable this. So if we recall, whenever we set up the SSH access, the point of that is so that if something does go wrong, we'll be able to turn off SS, uh, the two-factor authentication via our SSH login um, to prevent us from getting logged out of the, the, the system itself. So that's fine, we're, we're not going to uh, enable that at the minute. So then we've got a couple of options here at the bottom, save, enable two-factor authentication, and show QR code. So the first thing that we're going to do is hit enable two-factor authentication. We get prompted here that we'll be required for a code to set up the system. We'll just hit confirm there. There's no problems. So now that we've enabled two-factor authentication on the uh, TrueNAS installation, we're going to need to uh, add an authenticator app of some sort. So I'm using the Google Authenticator app, which you can find on the Android, uh, the Play Store, and I think probably on the iOS App Store uh, as well. And then the option that I have for um, adding the codes to the uh, Authenticator app is I can scan a QR code. So I'm going to show the QR code that I uh, need to scan here and then I'm going to uh, choose the option to scan the QR code on my authenticator app and once I've done that then I'm going to be able to see that the authenticator app itself is generating a code every uh, 30 seconds in order to allow me to log into the systems. So now that I've got the two-factor authentication set up then the next thing I'm going to do is just test that the login works successfully so I'm just going to hit the power icon here on the top right hand side and I'm going to hit the logout option and then when I log out I'll see that the login screen is prompting me with a new option I haven't seen before, which is the two-factor authentication code. So I'm just going to try and test to log in via the web UI, which means that I'll type in my username and my password, and then I'll be prompted for my two-factor authentication code as well, which I'll be able to get from the application. And then I'm just going to hit the login option. So, uh, Wonderfully, we can see that uh, the login option has worked. The two-factor authentication is working exactly as expected. I'm able to log into the web UI. But what about if I wasn't able to log into the web UI? What happens if there was a problem here? It wasn't letting me get in. How would I get back in again? Well, we'll take a look again at our SSH installation. We can see that I've already logged in as the root user account in my SSH uh, connection and I'm capable of enabling and disabling two-factor authentication from this command line so I'm just going to run a very quick command here to uh, disable two-factor authentication and I can see it's come back as a success so if I go here into the TrueNAS web UI and hit two-factor authentication or refresh my page rather I can now see that two-factor authentication is not enabled and indeed if I go and hit the power button hit log out uh, get prompted again just for my username and password. So that means, guys, if something has gone wrong, you are not completely logged out of your installation. However, <laughs> I know that my two-factor authentication is working. So now that I know that it's working and I've validated that it's working, how do I make sure that the two-factor is applied everywhere across the system? Two-factor is not, not useful if there's only one place that prompts you to uh, use your two-factor authentication. If an attacker had gotten my username and password for my root account, they, they uh, might be prompted for two-factor authentication on the web UI, but I'm not currently being prompted for it in SSH. So we're just going to go ahead and enable two-factor authentication here again in the web UI, and then we're going to actually tick, tick this option to enable two-factor auth for SSH. I'm going to save the options here as well. And then um, back in my PuTTY installation, I'm just going to, or my SSH connection, I'm just going to hit the exit option. I'm going to try and reconnect via PuTTY. And when I get prompted for my web login, I can type in my credentials as normal. And now it's asking me for my password as normal. And now it's asking me for my one-time password OAuth for my root user account, which is exactly what I want. I, I wanted to be prompting me for a one-time password for my SSH login as well. So if I go back to my Authenticator app, I can just type in the one-time password that's being generated. And then I can see that I'm logged into the, um, the SSH connection itself. So that's wonderful. We can confirm that it's also working for SSH. Now at this stage, in order to truly lock down the system, we want to go back to the uh, services 
and we want to disable some of the SSH options. So again, we allowed login as root with the password. We actually don't want that to be the default. Uh, most of the time, if you're going to log in uh, via SSH, you should be using an account that has the appropriate permissions or pseudo access. You don't necessarily want the SSH login to, uh, to allow root all of the time. Root is hyper level access. Um, and it's not as secure as it should be if you're allowing that through the, the um, SSH protocol. So we're just gonna uncheck that option and hit the save option as well. Now, at this stage, if you want to disable SSH entirely as well, you, you can also come down here, you can uncheck the start automatically box and you can uh, uh, stop the SSH service itself. That is, if you just wanna be ultra secure, again, we can confirm the two-factor authentication is working for our web UI, so we don't necessarily need the SSH backup. That's up to yourself, guys, if you're using SSH, you can obviously leave the service running. Maybe you had it running beforehand. So that's it, guys. That's how you enable two-factor authentication the safe way with your TrueNAS installation. That will give you the best possible chance of validating that the service is working without locking yourself out of your data. So at this stage, I would hope that you would be able to do the YouTube dance, which is to like, comment, and subscribe on the video. Let me know if you think there's a better way to do it, if there's a different way to do it, if you prefer to do something else, or if you think that this is all just a bunch of hokey and you shouldn't bother putting in two-factor authentication anyway. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the flip side.